بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. The first Muslims. Now after that day in that month of Ramadan, that momentous day, revelations started coming again and again to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now he understood that he had to prepare himself for what was to come. And only a strong and a brave man, helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified be he, can be a true prophet. Because people often refuse to listen to Allah's messages. Khadija radiallahu anha was the first to believe the Prophet and accept, and accept as true what he brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through her, things were made easier for the Prophet and Khadija strengthened him by helping him spread his message and stood up to the people who were against him. Then revelation stopped for for a time. The Prophet was very upset, he was very sad, thinking that Allah had abandoned him, he had left him. They might, he might have angered his Lord in, in some way. However, the Archangel Jibreel came back to him and said to him, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, from Surah Al-Duha. I'm not going to recite the entire surah, but, but it begins with saying, but Duha. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى etc etc and the translation to make things short is by the morning hours and by the night when it is at most still thy Lord hath neither forsaken thee nor doth he hate thee and verily the last will be better for thee than the first and verily the Lord thy Lord will give unto thee so that thou will be content did he not find thee an orphan and protect thee did he not find thee wandering and guide thee? Did he not find thee destitute and rich in thee? Therefore the orphan oppresseth not. Therefore the beggar drive not away. And as for thy Lord's blessings, declare it. Quran chapter 93, the entire surah, the entire chapter, from verses 1 to 11. The Prophet ﷺ began to speak secretly of Allah's message to those who were close to him and whom he could trust. At that time, Mecca was going through very difficult times. There was very food was scarce, and Abu Talib was finding it very difficult to feed his large family. The Prophet ﷺ said that he and another uncle, Al, uh, Al Abbas, who was a rich man, would each bring up one of Abu Talib's children in order to help him. The Prophet ﷺ took Ali, and his uncle took, took Jafar. One day, when the Prophet ﷺ was inside the city, the Archangel Jibreel appeared to him. He kicked the side of the hill, and the spring of water began to flow out. And then, he began to wash himself in order to show, in the running water, to show the Prophet how the ritual ablution, in Arabic, the wudu, was to be made properly before prayer. And then the Archangel Jibreel والسلام, showed him all the positions of the Muslim prayer, you know, the movements, etc., etc. And by the way, a, a, a small side note here if you check my previous videos, you will see that I have made three videos in total one which shows how to do the ablution, you can find them on my channel, and another two videos which show you how to pray. This would be a very good time to go and watch these after you finish watching this video, inshallah. Pray. Uh, God willing. So the Prophet returned home and taught all these things first to Khadija and then to his followers. Since then, Muslims have been purifying themselves in the same exact manner, the same ritual ablution. To begin with, though, only the Prophet and his wife knew of these things. Then one day Ali entered the room and found the Prophet وسلم, and Khadija praying. He was puzzled, so he's like, What are you doing? So the Prophet explained to him that they were praising Allah and giving thanks to him. That night, Ali stayed up thinking about all that the Prophet had said. He had great admiration and respect for his cousin. So finally, he came to a decision, and the next day he went to the Prophet and told him that he wanted to follow him. Thus, Khadija was the first woman to embrace Islam, the teaching which the Prophet brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Ali was the first young man. Shortly after, they were joined by Zayd ibn Haritha, a slave freed and adopted by the Prophet the Prophet began to leave Mecca with An in order to pray. Um, one day Abu Talib happened to pass by and when he saw them he stopped and asked them what they were doing. So the Prophet told him that they were praying and following the same religion as Ibrahim 
He explained that, like Ibrahim he had been ordered to guide the people to Allah's truth. Abi Talib looked at his son Ali and said, uh, that, that was probably a typo over on the top. Unfortunately, this, this text is not perfectly written. It has some uh, spelling mistakes. I apologize for that. It's not mine. Anyway, Abu Talib looked at his son Ali and said, Muhammad would never make you do anything that was wrong. Go with him. But I cannot leave the religion I now follow and which was followed by my father. Then he turned to the Prophet and said, Even so, I promise you, Muhammad, no one will hurt you as long as I'm alive. And with that, Abu Talib went on his way. At about this time, the news of Muhammad being the Prophet reached an honest, wise, and respected merchant of Mecca called Abu Bakr. He knew Muhammad well and believed he could never lie. So he went to find out for himself if the story were true. The Prophet ﷺ told him that he indeed had been sent by Allah to teach everyone to worship the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorified be he. On hearing this from the Prophet's own lips, Abu Bakr knew it was the truth and became a Muslim on the spot, instantly. Later, the Prophet was reported to have said that everyone he ever invited to accept Islam showed, you know, different signs of disbelief, doubt, etc, etc. Except Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. When he was told of it, he did not hold back or hesitate for one moment. He became Muslim on the spot, as I just said. Now, because of his wisdom, kindness, honesty, etc., people who always turn to Abu Bakr for advice, he therefore was a great source and he brought many people to Islam. Of course, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who guides, but we take the blessings when we are used as this tool to guide people to the truth. Among these people who were guided was Sa'id ibn Abi Waqas. I'm hoping I'm, hope I'm pronouncing this properly. I'm not murdering the guy's name. May Allah forgive me for that. Uh, the uncle of Amina, the Prophet's mother. The night before Abu Bakr came to visit him and tell him about Islam, Sa'id ibn Abi Waqas, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, dreamt that he was walking in darkness. And as he was walking, he saw the moon. And when he looked at it, he saw Ali, Abu Bakr, Zayd, the Prophet's free slave, and they were beckoning him, telling him to come and join them. When Abu Bakr told him about the Prophet's religion, he understood the meaning of the dream, and he went at once to the Prophet, and he declared himself a Muslim, a submitter to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified be. He understood that to be a Muslim means to submit. Another person brought to Islam by Abu Bakr was Bilal, brother Lan. One night Abu Bakr went to the house of Umayyah ibn Khalaf, one of the most important men of Quraysh. Umayyah was out and Abu Bakr found only Umayyah's slave, Bilal. So he spoke to him. And before he left, Bilal had already become Muslim. He had taken the Shahada. The number of people following the Prophet began to grow. Sometimes they would go, all of them would go out of the city to the mountains around Mecca to hear him recite the Quran and to be taught by him. This was all done in secret, in very secret. And only a very few people knew about Islam in those days, in those early days. And the reason for that, because we all know from history, that Islam was preached in secret for the first three years, if I remember correctly. This finishes this part. Thank you for your patience and your time. And, and the next part, inshallah, God willing, it's going to be the troubles begin. We're going to get into the more interesting stuff. It's all interesting, but we're just saying. And by saying that, thank you very much for your time once again. This is Behold God. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'm signing out.